We just might be in for a crisis. No, not that one. Not that one either. It's a crisis that no one seems to be talking about. The Hadza are a link to our past. They're the subject of lots of attention from the West, and for good reason. They live in a way that the rest of the world has forgotten. They're hunter-gatherers. They own no livestock. They grow no food. They store no food. And they migrate with their meals, living in temporary homes made of grass and branches. Everything they eat is foraged or hunted. The Hadza are a living mirror, reminding us of who we still are beneath already having. Everything you need to be happy. Your day is very important to us. But the fixation on them isn't just about the culture they preserve. It's about more than just the two million year old tradition they preserve. It's about the living things that the Hadza preserve. Because the crisis, it isn't happening here. People know about these deaths. These ones too. At least somebody's paying attention. But what about this one? The closest possible one to home. No, it's, it's literally inside the home. Who's paying attention to that? Gotta explain without going too far. Hey Matt, can you hear me? Yes, I can. How are you doing? Yeah. Oh, I'm good. Would love to hear some of your background. Yeah, my name is Matt. Really kind of focusing on understanding the microbiome of non-industrialized populations, profiling the microbiome of um, this hunter-gatherer tribe in Africa called the Hadza. Beyond studying their ways of life and learning about their culture, scientists have been spending time with the Hadza to collect their poop. They compared those poops to the poops of populations in the United States. Industrialized populations. Industrialized people. Industrialized poops. Modern medicine and infrastructure have given us antibiotics, vaccines, sanitation, assisted childbirth, the near eradication of polio, and the full eradication of smallpox. But in spite of all our progress, we've created an environment of band-aids. An environment of treating the effects rather than the causes. And at the root of many causes is a major part of us that we're weakening by the day. Because the Hadza aren't just a reference point for behavior and culture, their lifestyle makes them a reference point for the diversity of life inside us. Millions of years ago, our ancestors, before they could even dream of having fur, co-opted the many trillions of microbes living on and inside them. I already printed out a monkey, though. Behaving as a single ecosystem, this partnership gave microbes a home that would feed and shelter them in exchange for keeping harmful microbes away and making compounds for the host that it would eventually come to rely on for survival. That we would rely on for survival. This agreement runs so deep that these microbes are part of who we've always been. They shape what we think, what we feel, and how we behave. This relationship is so important to who we are that the gut has been given the name the second brain. In studies of mice with a weakened microbiome, as each generation of mouse passes their microbes on to the next, these gaps in the microbiome are inherited. Let this run for multiple generations, and the gaps turn into permanent extinctions. And without these healthy strains, there's room for bad actors to take their places. This is not intended to be a diss to Nicolas Cage. His role as Ben Gates in National Treasure is nothing short of legendary. Lacking the correct microbes, 
is linked to a whole mess of conditions that are most prominent in the Western world. A number of diseases that seem pretty clearly linked to the microbiome. Specifically, mm -hmm. it's these kind of chronic conditions of like inflammatory disorders, autoimmune disorders, allergies and asthma. You really only see at appreciable numbers in developed countries and you see them like increasing. Whereas in non-industrialized populations where you have very different microbiomes, you don't see that. Over evolutionary time, our body has learned how to interact with our microbiome and we're evolved in a way to kind of like use our microbiome for a number of things. And one of those things is training self from non-self. Autoimmune and inflammatory disorders are all kind of like our immune system attacking our self in one way or another. So what happened when we compared the Hadza to the Western populations? Huge amount of differences. What we're seeing over and over again is a massive loss of microbiome diversity among industrialized people. And a big concern among those paying attention to the Hadza is that, like in the mice studied, these losses in gut diversity in the developed world might also become extinctions. And with these extinctions, not only do we lose species of microbes, but we lose parts of ourselves, the parts of ourselves that come from living with them, beautiful human behaviors that are core to who we are. But as serious as the situation could become for a great number of people, we know that we can rebuild these ecosystems. We know that there's a time window where we can repair the gaps. The problem is that we're running out of time because that window is closing. And it's one thing to know what needs to happen, but when it comes to doing it, well, it's, it's, actually, it's actually not that complicated and we have a, a reasonably good shot, so. Antibiotics. Risk of losing them. Antibiotic resistance. Bacteria resistance. Antibiotic resistance. Never yet been a drug they could not defeat. Okay, so that's bad. But to make matters worse, we're also wiping out our own good bacteria. And before you ask, don't we need those antibiotics? No, we don't. The CDC estimates that not 10, not 20, but a full 33% of all antibiotics prescribed to people are totally unnecessary. If we cut those out, maybe we can avoid a whole lot of dead people. And speaking of cutting out, don't be a C-section baby. You'll miss the microbes you'd otherwise pick up on your way through the birthing canal. But if you lost out on that early life opportunity, the next one is actually moving in the right direction. Yes, there is an annual breastfeeding report card. And yes, we are talking about for babies. If you're not a baby and you want to breastfeed, that is a totally different decision that is not within the scope of this video. Number three, too much time in sanitized environments and not being outside. This is why the Amish have killer microbiomes. Processed food, designed to addict and destroy. And that goes hand in hand with number one, the single most important and also the simplest thing. Leave it here. Is that we stopped eating full pans of beans. Fiber is the number one ingredient for feeding all of the helpful little dopamine producing immune system stimulating microbes that we evolved with. The Hadza eat something like 150 grams of fiber every day while Americans eat less than a tenth of that. You can leave behind the prebiotics and the probiotics and the postbiotics, but if you leave behind the fiber, our microbes have nothing to eat, nothing to survive on. And that is exactly how our microbiomes are behaving, like they have nothing to survive on. Through industrialization, we have built our way out of what we used to do. We've cut ourselves off from the behaviors that maintain the vibrant communities of microbes inside us, the things that make us who we are. 
As nice as it sounds to just climb trees and eat honey all day, uh, there are reasons, good reasons, for shifting away from the hunter-gatherer lifestyle. But we're at a point where we've identified a mismatch between the world we evolved in and the world we live in today. We don't have to go back all the way, but we can take advantage of what we know we should have kept. So the question is, is this, right now, right here, the last chance, the last generation to keep this extinction from happening? Or is this a permanent turning point for our entire species and for the microbes inside of us that millions of people are potentially going to lose? Is this an extinction event happening inside us right before our eyes that we know how to stop but can't manage to change? Or are we resigned to a fate of watching as we slowly lose the richness of our own species? What's exciting is we have the knowledge and we have the tools to be able to reverse the trend. We know how to rebuild these ecosystems and we know just how important it is that we do. The question is if we will.